so today we're going to be going through a number of creating a bunch of different materials from scratch. So we'll cover um, how to take sort of any image you find or the desired material you'd like to turn into a viewer material, bring it into Photoshop, and create a bump map from that material, and then manipulate it in V-Ray to, to get sort of the right amount of reflectivity um, and texture and brightness and contrast and all that good stuff. And then we'll apply it to our just kind of simple house here um, to demonstrate what it looks like. And um, we'll sort of run through a bunch of different um, sort of iterations on the same concept, but um, with various results. So the first material I'd like to run through is um, just a wood slat. So go ahead and open up the material called Wood Slats 03 in Photoshop. So this is just a pretty simple wood slat material. Um, honestly, I think I just like found it on Pinterest or something. Um, but I, 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 I use this for a lot of um, projects in the office. And what's great about this is it is a seamless texture. So when this copies next to itself, it'll just look like a continuous long board. And then when it copies vertically, it'll just look like more slats. Um, when you're finding materials to use, you want to get a good sample size. Um, so obviously this will repeat. And like, so this third board up, for example, you see it has like a stronger wood grain. You'll see that every 20 boards or so, but there's enough of a sample size that your eye won't catch it. If you if we only had, you know, those four or five boards there, that would start to look repetitive. So it's when you, when starting out, you want to find something that is, um, you know, pretty good size sample size starting point. And um, first thing we want to do is as the material itself, it's sort of ready to go because it's seamless and the wood's nice. But the most important part of the step is that we need to make a butt map. So for this to read like an actual slat wall, it needs to have some depth. If I were to just map this in V-Ray, it would feel just sort of like a picture of a slat wall. Um, and V-Ray actually is pretty good at building in that sense of texture without actually having to model each individual slat. So to do that, what I'm going to do first is go to Image Adjustment Hue Saturation. I'm going to completely desaturate the wood. Click OK. Um, so what I'm doing this is trying to do a black and white bump map. And the way V-Ray is going to interpret this is that everything that's lighter will read more proud and everything that's darker will read more recessed. So these dark lines that you see in between the slats are going to read as set back and the wood itself will read as proud but um, because I'm using the original texture I have a lot of other stuff happening here right like I'm seeing all this wood grain and there's a lot of variation with it so I want to sort of simplify this and increase the contrast so that um, we're really just grabbing the the depth out of this texture to be our bump map. So I'm going to go to image adjustment, brightness contrast, and we'll increase the brightness almost until it's sort of washed out everything. What this ends up doing is leaving just a little bit of the strongest wood grain, which is fine to have a little bit of that grain come through because that'll give a nice texture on the wood. And because it's more subtle from just like um, medium grays, it won't read as strong as the main contrast, which is the face of the board and the uh, gap between them. So something in here, right, like maybe around 100. I'm going to increase that contrast a little bit too. And that looks good. This is sort of what you're going for with these images. Click OK. And then I'm going to save this as, I'm going to keep it as the same thing, but I'm just going to add bump at the end, and that's just a way to remind me that this is the bump map for wood slats 03. Save. 
Okay. So let's go to our model now and start to apply this and see how it's looking. So here's our little house. Um, so for this material, I just want to apply it here up this little terrace. Um, it's sort of just like a nice wood texture that you can walk out onto. Um, so I'm going to go to my material editor. As you can see right now, there are no materials in this file. Um, our global settings are set up um, similar to the uh, process that we use in my other tutorial about setting uh, global settings for an image. All right, so we'll just set that to low and maybe like 3,000 pixels wide, just enough to kind of get like an idea of what's going on, and but not take too much time to render. Um, one thing we'll always do with these settings is double check our lighting. So like we've discussed before, if I look at this in plan, I'm gonna want my sun kind of coming from the south uh, west corner here so I'll check my sun make sure it's on manual control I'll just dial this over to about the southwest just kind of estimate that height there that should be good um, and when using these settings we always want to set up our HDRI as well so we do that through the dome light so I will click on the dome light drop that in it's going to ask for an HDR to link to. I'll attach it to number 11, which I've sent you guys that we use in other tutorials. Also going to make a layer for that so that it doesn't get next turned off or something. Yeah. Make sure I put, keep that dome light on my lights layer. And now I need to sync up that dome light with my sun. So if you remember my sun, you can see in plan it's coming from the southwest. And my HDRI, if you remember, the arrow points to the sun. So if I rotate this, oops, down towards the southwest, now I know that this is pointing towards the sun and my son is pointing back from the southwest so that these are synced. So in the um, asset editor of the materials, first thing I'm gonna do is just create a generic material. I'll rename this right away and call it wood slats. And this, so yeah, the first thing we want to do is replace the diffuse layer. So right now it's just set to a color. If we change this color, it will change the material. But if we click here in the checker box and set it to bitmap, what we do is um, select our wood slat material, click OK. So now that's there, we'll click back and we'll see that this is actually showing up as that wood slats. Uh, if you click this little box right here, you can actually change the way you view it so you can get a better understanding of what it looks like. Um, so sometimes it's like wall close up is a good way to see how it's actually working. This preview window is more or less pretty decent, but it's not perfect. Um, so the first thing we want to get correct with this material is the reflection. Um, as we discussed before, every material has some sort of reflectivity, um, but trying to get that right is sort of one of the key elements to getting material to read right. So wood slats, while not, you wouldn't think of as necessarily reflective, they're likely treated and we'll just have just a little bit of sheen on them. Um, as you've probably noticed from like a nice wood painted deck or something like that, that it has just a little bit of reflectivity. So if I go down here, um, we'll start with the reflection color. So this is what the reflection itself will be. If this is set to black, there's zero reflection. And if this is set to full, you can see it almost looks like there's like a mirror code on here. Um, what I like to do is set this so that it's just slightly brighter 
and then the general tone of the material itself. So this is like a medium wood tone. So I'm going to set it just a little bit brighter than that. Um, and again, this just works on a black and white gradient. Um, if you wanted to have some sort of reflection that's like a blue reflection for whatever reason, you can change this color, but generally you want to keep that at white. Um, the reflection glossiness is what's really going to get this from looking like a mirror to something that's more matte. So for something like wood, I would check this to like 0.65. And now we can see it's a lot more diffuse of a reflection. So you can see that as the angle gets sharper on the far right here, the reflection starts to show up. It's just a little bit of a white glow that happens. Um, what what will be nice because of our HDRI is that white glow will be more of a like bluish sky tint because it'll actually be reflecting the sky that we created. Um, and everything else we're going to leave the same. So all we did was just kind of adjust that color to be a little bit more uh, towards white and turn that glossiness down to about 0.65. Um, no refraction to worry about, no opacity to worry about. The only other thing is the maps. So we'll go down to the maps drop down and the bump map or we'll turn it on and for the bump map we're going to link that to the bump map we just made. open and back and so you'll notice here it's not going to be that striking you're not going to get a good sense of it from here um, and that's just because uh, this preview window is not that great but it is working because it is turned on here um, and so what I'm actually going to do because well, we'll give it a try at just one see here. Sometimes I like to turn this up because we have a pretty big reveal there. We'll see if we can, how it looks at just keeping the uh, intensity at one. Um, that's really it, that, all that we're going to do for this. So it's a pretty straightforward material. And we'll minimize it. So now let's go to our little terrace here, which is on the wood layer. So to the right of that, under material, there's a blank box. I will click there, go to the drop down to V-Ray, Browse, and under the drop down, my only material that's available is wood slats, so I'll click on that, click OK, click OK. If I look at this in rendered view, you can see everything is blank except for my terrace, and you can see it sort of came in oriented all kinds of different ways, which is not good, and also the scale is quite correct. So now we've got to map that so that it feels like the correct scale. So I'm just going to select one here and come up to my properties toolbar and then under there there's texture mapping. So I'll turn that on. And for this we want to do a box mapping which is generally what you want to do for all orthogonal planes. So I'll click here and so I don't actually know what the scale of this JPEG is in real life. So when I don't know what it is, I tend to just make it a 10 by 10 by 10 and then eyeball it and start to scale it from there. So 10 feet by 10 feet by 10 feet, capped, yes or no, we want yes. And now I'll look at it. And it's actually not too far off, right? So if I just came in here and measured that board, for example, It looks like that board is almost three inches, which is about what I want to be, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to leave that like that for now. And then so my other my other surface here, I'll just select it. I'll come over to the match mapping. I'll click on that, and I'll click on the original. And it matches it and syncs it up perfectly, so it looks like the wood slats turn that corner. And you know, now that I look at it, it does look maybe a little chunky. I'm going to make it a little smaller. So once I click on it, I can go to Show Mapping, which reveals the mapping widget here. Um, and this little dashed line box basically works like any other object. So if I scale it, it'll scale the texture. 
So I want these to be a little tighter. So I'm going to scale this 1D. So from 10 feet, I'm going to scale it down to 8 feet. So I get a, a sort of tighter slats here. And I'll select this other piece and I'll match it to here. So now they're both equally correct. So that's starting to feel pretty good. I'm just going to kind of come in here and do a quick render to see how it's looking. And this is coming in. And so if I look here close, you can actually, it's pretty subtle and our resolution is low, but if you look in there, you can see it, it, there is a sense that there is some recess between these boards. But more importantly, I think what you really want to pick up and see this like little teeny highlights here, right? That are that are going with the wood grain and sort of highlighting that, that upper edge. Those are going to be what, when you render this at high res and you step back, are going to make it feel much more realistic. So just, it's it seems subtle, but these little highlights here that are catching the sun are what's going to make it feel like it actually has a wood grain texture to it and not just a flat image. Um, and even when I zoom out here, you can see that, like, especially if I look right up here in this corner, you can really see it has a little bit of um, graininess to it that's, that makes it come to life.